What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom and Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be running through tonight's Friday MLB slate, one of the last big slates we're going to have of the season uh, that I will be participating in for MLB. So uh, it's fun. I'm going to plan on playing a little bit more than usual. Also had a really, uh, obviously, a good night. I chopped the 222. Sheets had the the lone million lead after three quarters. And, and I mean, seriously, to have a unique lineup like that was, was really, amazing. Really unbelievable, man. Um, and I did want to point out just that the lineup, and, and you mentioned even that it was with Sabres and coming out with early, the lineup that I posted in Discord, I posted one lineup for the showdown because, I, you know, I post my builds on the site every day, but when sometimes on a short day, like a, a weird Thursday, like yesterday was weird with baseball, I'll just post it in the Discord. And that lineup was the lineup that ended up winning and tying for first for that tournament and actually almost almost won the million as well or tied for first with a bunch of people. But uh, but I, I do think there's something to get out of it. I'm not saying you should just copy my exact lineups, but those, you know, the, those are the lineups that I'm, I'm I end up rolling with a lot of the times. And it's been, what, five or six times now I've either won oh. or chopped a tournament that, that, that it's been posted in there. So I do encourage you guys to check that out. Check out our Discord. I'll put a link in the video. And uh well, yeah, what, it was a fun well night. What, I, what, what I would like to say about that before we head on to baseball today, I want I want to shout out to to I guess the Saberson as far as this point goes, and shout out to Shibs and and True DFS and to myself for this because I was talking over the last couple of weeks that I was very disappointed that I was unable to to generate unique lineups, you know, regardless of what I tried to do, and I was really wor- you know I was worried that that I was just kind of like doing it wrong for whatever reason. But then I thought maybe it was just like kind of variance just happened to run into like a bunch of dupes. So, but, so yesterday, just so everybody knows what I did was I just, I literally, I used the true DFS projections. Okay. I uploaded them into Saber Sim. And then I did one little thing. I, I made um my max salary 48, nine. Okay. And then I just ran it just like that. No, 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 no tweaks, no nothing. And that generated like a couple of unique lineups out of the third out of 30. You know what I mean? And 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 so you, you can do it. You know what I mean? You could do yeah. it without without going completely new to bananas. And mm-hmm. let's, that's not to say it's gonna win, right? But but you get a, a unique lineup uh, out of a group of lineups that all have some sort of chance to win. That's all you could ask for it in showdown slates. Yeah, um, especially in the millions. It's, it's very rare to have a single lineup with. And and then nobody in the lineup was 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 completely like obscene. Like, like the, the lowest owned guy was Trent Sherfield, and he was ten percent. It wasn't like yeah, anybody. Yeah. He was like one percent. But I happened to have him paired with the Miami kicker, which was kind of a rough, you know, twosome to have paired together. You know, right. so that's was, probably what the what did it. You know, two um, receivers, no Tua, all that stuff, and no Tua. Yeah. But aside from that, I mean, listen, that, I was very very happy with 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 that outcome because now it's I'm going to continue to play. You know. Um, uh, Cause you give me like, you listen, you give me a portfolio of lineups in which some of them are unique that have a chance. That's all you could ask for in showdown. And that's right. That's- it, it, and, and the devil, the, the devil's advocate though, other people will say this and they'll, they'll be wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, but because what, what, what they don't realize is yes, it is it, it, on a night where you, you have to chop, you have to chop. And that's going to be most football slates, yep. but the time you get the unique lineup to win will make up for the 700,000 other yep. times you're making a little bit worse lineups. Yep. You know what I mean? You yep. win the million one time, you can have you, you can go ahead and max enter for the rest of the season on everything and yep. you're okay. You know what I mean? Like yep. it's so so I actually think that there's there's really is some credit to trying to trying to be unique. I, in the 222, I don't often care as much about it, but in the 15 in the in the, the million one, I well, actually think it's much it's more not even not caring too much about it. It's not as difficult to do in 222 either, you know. Like, it's not uh, it, it's not, but there's and there's still what is there, eight thousand in this two twenty yeah. seven thousand? That's still it, just eight thousand. Right? There's a lot, or maybe it's six thousand. I don't know exactly what the number was, but it's a lot of people. Yeah. Um yeah, and like and you know, I, I chopped mine twenty five ways, but if the guys, the team of people behind me had forty seven of the same lineups, you know what I mean? It's just you're gonna run into that, and sometimes that's gonna be the case. But in these smaller buy-ins, especially with large, you know, that are larger field that are crazy, just getting that one, those unique lineups really can be beneficial. And as you see with a football game like last night or any football game, there's just so many different range of outcomes of things that could happen at any second that will take you from first place to 5,000th, that will take you into first place. But if you can get a low owned enough thing and even keeping with the chalk, but leaving enough money on the table, I think that's, you know, that's proven to be a winner uh, even for, you know, for unique lineups in the past. So I thought it was Boy, I, I'll say one last thing about that football game last night. I feel really, really bad. So yeah, for those of you that watch that Tua thing, that was you know, well, I feel I was awful, whatever, but I did my survivor video with, uh, with Brave Jayhawk yesterday. I was talking about the game. He was thinking about Cincinnati. 
know, back when two was questionable, we're talking about this, and he's I'm taking some space to root for anything like this, but there's like a non-zero chance that he doesn't make it out of that first half, you know? Wow. And 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 I said, and then and that, that's like whatever, but then I said, yeah, and you know the, how cautious they were with him this week. I mean, they'll take him out if he even just gets a hangnail, is what I said. Right. Um, so well, they will and they I, won't because there's a lot of rumors right here that that he didn't that he didn't go through full concussion protocol, which has right. to be because they wanted they have the new deal with Amazon Prime. They wanted to yeah. sort of put their best foot forward. And there's also rumors that that that, that, that they wanted to get their first four no start in I don't remember what yeah. the last time it was for for yeah. Miami. So it definitely seems sketchy that he played, and it's easy to say that in hindsight. Yeah, I think we have to just really understand with football. Like, I don't like the victory laps of the guys afterwards going, no. Yeah, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to no. happen. All this. No, it's horrible. What happened was yeah. absolutely horrible. It was yeah. a frightening thing to see. Kids shouldn't yeah. be watching that. Yeah. Um, anyway, it was, it was pretty brutal. All right. So okay. let's uh, get into it. The big baseball slate. Big baseball slate. Uh, am I sharing my screen yet? Um, Not yet. We'll just do that and we'll be right. We'll be in business. All right. Ready to go. Ready to do it. All right. Let's see. We still have the screen yet. Uh, yeah, I am. Hmm. That's not so. popping up for me. There it goes. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's do it. Uh, starting off with Philly. Why don't you talk about this one for a second? Um, what you're interested in? Because I am. Uh, I'm getting something together here. Uh, what yeah, do you like? I'm from not this getting. One? What? Okay. What do you... I'm, not, I'm not getting to either of the pitchers here. And with respect to the slate, you know, you'd like to make the uh, the slate small. It's a little hard today, but I'm going to figure out a way to do it. As far as hitting goes, I do have Philly right near the top of the list. Um, it, I, I wonder, is this the second end of a double header? Um, so I'm, not, I'm not sure. It is. it is. Okay. So, um, and you have, just, just for what it's worth, before we get into what we like, if there's serious rain concerns here, like very serious. And there's 17 mile an hour winds blowing in from center field, right center field. And it's 61 degrees. So that's, that's the only thing stopping me. And, and Vegas sort of caught onto it. I, I have a feeling Philly would have had like a total over six in this game. If, if this wasn't the case, um, but it's, it's ugly weather. It's ugly. This isn't, this is this is important. I mean, what, what Washington cancels games in sunshine. So this is, not, they're, they're, they're not playing this. So I'm not worried about it. So that's another way to, uh, another way to keep, keep the slate small is, out Philadelphia. So mm -hmm. I'm ready to move on if you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. And by the way, if something changes with weather, I will move back on to Philadelphia because I really like Philadelphia, but I can't do it with that, with that, with that weather and the wind blowing and even if it happens. So I'm going to move past it. All right. Next one we got up is Baltimore and your Yankees. Well, here we go. The marketing machine has done it. They got, mm -hmm. they got judge back home. Um, for a couple of games with Baltimore before they go and finish their season off in Texas. So where they got three days to do it in front of freaking packed houses. And it's listen, it's gonna be cold tonight. Um, but 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 uh no weather issues and and they're putting Jordan Lyles out there as the possible as the possible uh, serving up of the uh, of the aforementioned uh, mass celebration. Um and I actually do think he does it tonight. Um, uh, and I actually do have interest in the Yankees as one of the top, uh, one, two, three, four, five stacks. I do not have any interest in Herman, nor do I have interest in Jordan Lyles. And, uh, I don't have any interest in Baltimore either. Mm -hmm. We are pretty much uh, on the same page. I really like the Yankees. Um, I actually think they might end up higher for me. I, you look, the thing with Lyles is that as much time as he's killed me as a pitcher, all you have to do is get him that time when you have the low ownership against him. The Yankees are exactly the kind of team that'll make you throw pitches, that will make you throw strikes, and then they'll hit those out of the park. And Jordan Lyles is a great bet to give up multiple home runs tonight. So I am very into the Yankees stack. And I think outside of Judge, you're not going to see much ownership. So I'm very, very high on it. Um, just looking at the the weather, because you know this time of year, it's like uh, the first thing I should be doing. You do have six mile an hour winds blowing in from left center not a huge amount only 63 degrees in new york so not great so i guess you could make a priority even for the lefties i think that you know rizzo uh a stump sort of stack with rizzo judge well may should be back torres donaldson stanton down at six. this is a strong lineup and let's see also the yankees might do some some funny stuff with some of the other spots and 
you might see Oswaldo Peraza back or whatever. Oswaldo will be in there, but Peraza may not may, may also be back in there. He's twenty two hundred if he's there. So really, it's going to come on to how the, the 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 lineup shakes out. But I have no problem trying to attack a little bit of Lyles, and uh, I do like the Yankees. I wish it was a little better hitting weather, but I, I'm with you. I, I I like the Yankees, and I will not be playing Herman. Um, I actually don't have an issue if anybody wants to play any Orioles, but I'm I'm not personally trying to target them. All right, let's get to the next one. Um, let me just grab it real quick. Uh, Boston, Boston, Toronto. Sheets, why don't you start this one off? Toronto, with the departure of Philly from my list, has now become the top uh, stack for me. Not by a lot, but 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 uh, among that group of five I mentioned. Actually, a five by two. So I have five top ones and two values. Um, but I definitely have Toronto rated as the top right now. Um, I don't know what the weather's going to be like there, but the weather is Pavetta. Pavetta is usually good weather for, for power. <laughs> um, and Toronto is, a, can, you know, they, they, they have, they have a lot of it. So I, uh, I, I have Toronto rated number one for now. Uh, I am not getting to any Pavetta at 7k, nor am I getting to any Manoa at 9,100. And that's uh, where I'm at. Yeah. I'm, I, I actually think that an unowned Manoa is definitely going to be on the list for me. So this guy's had a really great season, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he just doesn't have the same exact fantasy. He, he, like, like we talked about early in the year, you become a better pitcher. And sometimes you do that by limiting your, your 10, 11, 12 strikeout games, which is not as good for fantasy. But you want to talk about consistency. This guy has been just freaking awesome all the time. Boston is not the same team on the road that they are at home. And at, if, you, if you really talk about sub 5% ownership, we have to at least consider Manaya as a, you know, for large field, getting ahead of the field, having 10% of them, even that, that, even if that, if that gets you different, you know, that's, that's, I think it's an interesting way to go. And I, I just love the ownership at, at 9,100 for a guy who I think could, could end up being right near the top of the slate in terms of overall points scored for a pitcher Toronto. I'm, I'm very, very open to Toronto. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to end up with on this one because I have them right as like a middle or middle ish thing. But I like that they. I like that I don't have to worry about weather so much with them. I like the that the ownership is not going to be this crazy Toronto ownership, which we've seen at times. So I, I can I can support the Toronto side of it for sure. I'm just going to have to see till the end of the show uh, what my favorite stacks are. Right now, I do like them and the Yankees in a very similar capacity. So I, I, just keep in mind they're they're expensive for the bats you want to get. So maybe uh, maybe they. I mean, we're definitely going to be low owned, but. I have no problem with going after it. And the only thing that frustrates me is that occasionally you get that good Pavetta game and you're like, what did I do? They just, they've got one hit through six innings. You know what I mean? Like, um, and, and Pavetta historically good against righties, which is a facing a righty dominant lineup. So, it, you know, I'm, I'm into it, but I'm not as excited as, as maybe I could be. And for what it's worth though, Pavetta has 120 times faced these guys, given up 17 extra base hits, 16 walks. Um, these are very high rates. And his strikeout rate is below league average against this team. So everything looks like it could be really setting up nicely for Toronto here. And uh, the Boston Bull, Boston has nothing to play for. Uh, they'll they'll try to play their guys, but I don't believe in their bullpen at all anyway. So I, uh, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to talk myself into this one more and more, I think, as the day goes on. All right, KC and Cleveland. Uh, I can start this one off just to, to get a little, little different here. Um, I... I don't know if I want to do anything in this game. I, I really like Singer as a pitcher. I like that he's taking a leap, but I don't like taking pitchers against Cleveland, especially on large slates. It really limits your strikeout upside. Um, Cleveland has sort of clinched now, so maybe if they get a really weak lineup in there, uh, maybe something. Uh, I don't. I never mind going against Savale, but I don't really want to stack against him. So I, I guess the Royals pieces are probably my favorite part of this game. But it's 59 degrees with the wind blowing in. It almost feels like we should have interest in the pitchers. I don't know, Cheats. Where do you stand on this one? Um, Brady Singer is less than 5% owned. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and the only thing that concerns me is that he just had his season high in, in, in pitches of 110. Um, mm -hmm. Can't imagine that if they have any interest in developing this guy. That, mm -hmm. that that we're going to see 110 as and, and against against the team that again is where strikeouts are a little stingy i just don't think i'm going to do it um but i mean he's he's certainly come around this season he's popped he's 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 i guess ace 
You know what I mean? Like he's their ace. You know, he's their he's their man. He's certainly, he's certainly a Royals ace for sure. Yeah, well, that's what I meant. You know, yeah. he's their ace, and and the, my you know, and and just I think there's just too many pitchers um, on the slate for me to get there. Um, but he's certainly certainly a decent low owned option. But I, I just don't think this is. I just can't quite do it. That's that's where I'm at. And and it would seem that 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 KC would be the team to go after. I'm not quite getting there. Um, in an attempt to keep the state slate somewhat small. But again, you play 50 lineups or so, I would expect to have a singer and I would expect to have some Royals. That, that's yeah. where I'm at. There. And you might want to save money on some pitching today, depending on how some lineups come out, until you realize that it's a monster slate at the end of the season that probably is going to offer a bunch of value we don't even know about yet. <laughs> that's interesting. Okay. Um, because otherwise, if you're looking down, I, I, do, I do think that Savale would actually be in play, but it's just... You're going with no upside. I hope for 22 or 23 out of a 7,700 doesn't feel like the best best way to play DFS. Well, um, the um, the 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 righties against Tiger stream uh, is is uh, the train is rolling. I mean, you got Joe Ryan um, against Detroit at 8,600. Um, I don't see him getting all that much ownership for some reason. I have him like 10, 11 percent. Um, I guess just that's just the function of the slate size, you know, just like so many, so many pitchers out there. But, you know, right. Listen, righties against Tigers are good and, and decent pitcher, decent righties against Tigers are better. You know, so um, I think Ryan is clearly in play. I don't exactly understand the owners. Actually, I do understand the owners. There are probably some better plays, you know, whatever. There's some some, some good plays that's going to keep all these guys ownership down. Um, I think Joe Ryan's obviously a really, really good play. Uh, and I'm not getting into pretty much anything else in the game. Yeah. So, so here's the, 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 what this is, this is Joe Ryan. I, I like today, by the way, but this is how I sort of get to my Manoa thing. We have basically a sure thing for Manoa to pitch a quality game. Cause he basically does every time. And then you've got Joe Ryan who has a huge range of outcomes. Now he does get Detroit, but they're $500 apart. And one's going to be three times to four times as much as owned as the other one is. I just, I think that they're not that far apart. Um, I, I think Manoa is obviously a better pitcher, but obviously the matchup, you know, something um and by the way Manoa is still pitching they they, they need to hold on to their to their to their thing so I, I'm giving a little boost to him Joe Ryan why wouldn't they just I'm just trying to look where they are in the the race because I know that they fell out but like they, they're, what are they playing for trying to get to 500 there's a good chance Joe Ryan is is maybe not cruising but if he's not cruising you might just see like 75 pitches out of him there's just no reason to think that they're going to extend a guy like this uh, Brady Singer say say what we will about him, but like Joe Ryan is a is a younger, higher well, higher level prospect. But Brady Singer's gotten further into his pitching career, so I, I don't know. I, I I worry a little bit about the pitch count possibilities on a big slate, but everything else seems to match up. It is Detroit uh, with this run total, by the way, where it is. Uh, I I don't know if it's the craziest thing to like consider Tyler Alexander in a in a long like a giant field tournament. This is a really, really bad lineup they're going to roll out there for Minnesota. I'm probably not going to do it, but I wouldn't fault anybody else for playing him at 5,100 coming off of a couple nice starts. So that's all my information for this game. I don't really, uh, I, 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 I worry for Ryan a little bit, and I feel like he looks like a better play than he might actually be. So you want you want to get a sense. I mean, listen, of what playoff baseball is is going to be like, you know, um, you know, listen, the Dodgers have had some good matchups out in the, out in the, out, of, out in the West recently, whatever. Um, you got the Braves or one game behind the Mets for the division, okay? Starting a, 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 a weekend set in Atlanta, and we got DeGrom against freaking Freed in front of a packed house for, you know, a, a big, big game. You know what I mean? Like, this is a big game for both these teams. So, uh first of all i'll, I'll just say that w what that means by the way is I, I i really do feel as though Degrom can is going to be let loose you know um Agreed. i think this is a game they really need and want and and you know this is this is almost the playoffs already you know what i mean like this is i think you, you get the full Degrom treatment now again atlanta's a good team and Atlanta's gotten some Degrom recently, uh, maybe a couple of starts ago, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, got remember getting to Degrom means you know getting two runs, you know, what I mean? like right. or whatever. Um, and especially well, especially at eleven seven, which is what he is. But um, 
If, if you're going to fade DeGrom, please don't do it because you think he's going to be limited, I think. I, I, I really think that he gets rolled yeah, out there. Agreed. Um, agreed. So, uh, with that said, I, I have him I have DeGrom at only six – well, over. I have him 15% ownership. Um, and and I think I think I'm going to be tempted. Listen, there, there's there's – I think that Bur- we'll get to Burns. I think Burns, given the price or whatever, is probably like a better play and stuff like that. But 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 if I'm going to really actually get a full Degrom game um, when he, I don't know, it's kind of hard for me to to avoid it. I agree 100. Uh, percent Couldn't agree more. It's it, you have to take shots on on the Degrom's ownership, even at his price that, they, that he is appropriately priced. But he's going to be is going to be suppressed. I actually have Degrom as the first guy we've talked about who I have as an actual priority. And nice. I will make sure that I'm above the field on him, whatever the field is. And Atlanta, it, it, for you know, net downside, decent hitting weather in Atlanta. Um, yeah, sure, and a good team, but you know, whatever. Like, yeah, no, no, but if you have, you got to hit the ball actually to, to make it go anywhere. So yeah, <laughs> so I'm, I'm on board with the Degrom thing. Uh, I actually, you know, I, I I'm not going to play Freed, but he's just another. We should just mention that. As always, he's you know one of those middling plays that is probably going to end up fine. But uh, I, I, my, I, my heavy interest here is Degrom, and that's pretty much it. All right, moving on. What do you have next? Uh, Tampa Bay, Houston. All right, well, so go ahead. Uh, well, I was gonna say. I mean, I, I don't, I don't usually play Fran, uh, Fran Mir Valdez. Um, uh, I'm not getting to him today. I and I will, I'll, I'll say this again, like. I don't know what's what, what's happening with the. Not what's happening. I know what's happening with Tampa. Tampa's like getting everything ready to rumble for the, for the playoffs. I guess this this Rasmussen guy's really good, you know. And and, and, and listen, pitching in Houston ain't, ain't 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 any piece of cake, right? Um, and it's an enormous slate. And I'm looking down my list of like projected guys, and I can barely find him, which which means he's probably going to be like one percent owned or whatever it is. Um. I, let me put it this way. I will have made worse plays in my life than, than Drew Rasmussen. I'm probably not going to do it, but, but I would not be, I would not be messing with any, with any, with anything against Tampa this season. Right. Now. Yeah. So and, for me, it's going to be nothing. If you want to the truth. Yeah. Tampa still got an outside chance at hosting the, uh, hosting the wild card series, you know, having the home field advantage. Um, I, I think there's nothing to do here. I think, uh, I, I don't know. I kind of want to kind of want to think about Rasmussen depending on what lineup the, the Astros put out there. They don't need That's to put true. anything out there. You know, Rasmussen has got a ceiling. He's 7,900. Um, I think it's worth a gamble, but again, I have a bunch of guys like this on the slate. So trying to narrow them down is, is probably going to be like, Oh, there's, they'll be spread out my, my $15 lineups, but I'm not going to be heavy on them in the, uh, they won't be in like my 888s, but Rasmussen is a guy I'm considering. And there's no way I'm playing Valdez. They, they, it's weird. They never seem to shorten his pitch count, but I just am not going to bet on it. You know, they, again, nothing to play for last it would be second to last start, I guess, of the season. Um, I just don't think it's for me. All right. Uh, Miami, Milwaukee. So you have a pitcher who is basically pitching for a Cy Young. Um and I think it matters. And I am shocked. Am I missing totally? I know you had to sit the other. Let me just see if I'm missing something about pitches. I, I don't understand why Alcantara would be this low owned. Um, I just don't. Um, and I think Burns is going to be the really popular one. I like Burns as well. I guess that's the reason why Alcantara won't be owned. But I will be very overweight on both these pitchers. I'm, I'm going to have to find the value that I say is going to be out there because Alcantara Burns are, I mean, it, this is a great, I, I like this matchup a lot for both of their styles. Um, so I, I'm, I'm very heavily interested in both. And it just seems weird that we don't take the better pitcher at one tenth the ownership. Um, there's something, there's something that you, that, that, that you don't get because, because you, like, because you know more about baseball than most DFS players. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Look, look, that nobody knows who Sandy Alcantara is in DFS, like nobody. I think they you, do now a little bit. I'm just telling you, nobody plays him. Like nobody never. plays him. That's true. He never projects well relative to his price. He's always five percent owned. I mean, like nobody ever plays him. It's the equivalent. You know who it's it's, it's? it's a little different, right? But but 
It's like we talked the guy we talked about yesterday. Like if you ask like a hundred DFS players who the top pitch in baseball, Urias wouldn't even be like people would not even know he's he's on the he's like in the league. You know what I mean? Like these are just not the like a Valdez. Like some of these pitchers are like really good. You know what I mean? That we don't think about because we're DFS because as, as pure DFS players, I don't give a crap. You know what what that they never lose. They don't give me you know nine strikeouts in four innings. I don't want to know from it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So 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 that that's the thing about the Alcantara is he's always low owned. Um, he also always has like not as much win equity as some of these other pitchers, right? Because yeah. he's on a you know kind of a crappy team. Yeah. So I guess that might factor into his projection somewhat, which is why he doesn't project as well sometimes. Maybe, but um, hey. <laughs> Milwaukee, we've 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 uh, we've we've used worse pitchers against Milwaukee over the last over the last year. Let's put it that way. And um, in this game, look, Burns is I think the better play because he's against the worst team. Like by you know, but I I don't I don't mind Alcantara like you said. And I, listen, I'll tell you, I look down my list. Like I have to find, I'd have to look so far down my list to get to Alcantara. Like I have Alcantara projected, and this is like aggregate or whatever. Like with like eighteen fantasy points, and these that's what this guy projects for. You know what I mean? Like and 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 then you look at then you go yeah, and you plus actually look at what he, he averages twenty three. So I don't. Understand. And then yeah, then then his last two starts, he's at thirty nine and a thirty. Now listen, this is against Washington, whatever. But listen, if he gets this win, he's why is he not getting thirty? Like why why is why is Burns the only one getting thirty today? You know, it's like right. so I, I I'm I'm with you, man. I I would um and again, it's, you're, you're never you literally. No matter what program you use, what optimizer you use, whatever, you will never get a shred of Alcantara tonight unless you force yourself to do it. And I think that's not the worst idea in the world tonight is to force yourself to do something like that. I, I, I get it. I'm with you. Um, let's let's like I, I I just think that that's what we should do. We should make sure to be overweight these these top pitchers who are really very in very similar spots to the other guys around them, but they're getting so much lower ownership. Um, because of that. And I just don't think it makes enough sense uh, to me personally. All right. Um, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, what do you got here? Well, this is going to be like a, uh, a recurring theme. Okay. Uh, this is what I've said the last, I guess, five times that he's six times he's pitched. Are we sure he's pitching? Cause I've now, now DraftKings doesn't have him as the, st- Oh, they do. Never mind. Sorry. My fault. My fault. Yes. yes, yes. Go ahead. Uh, I'll just repeat what I said the last six times, but a little different take. I mean, he, Jack Flaherty projects is the best value on the slate. Um, he does. Uh, and and now what, what do you do with that information, right? So let's go back. So June 26th, you know, he went into the injured reserve, whatever, uh, D, the, the IL. He comes back on September 5th as the most popular f- player on the slate, and he got 16 fantasy points. Then he went into Pittsburgh as the most popular pitcher on the slate and got negative. Then he went into play, home against Cincinnati as the most popular player on the slate and got seven. Then he went into San Diego and not as many people played him. He's got up to 99 pitches and he's improved. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm kind of into it a little bit more tonight. I don't think he's going to get that much ownership um, just because it's a big slate. And I think that he's kind of come around and I think he'll get a little, not revenge, but he gets a second shot back at Pittsburgh who, you know, they touched him up decently when he was just back off the injured reserve. And I think he's going to have a good game tonight. So I have to to really take a look at the ownership. If he's really going to be 20, 25%, maybe that's a little bit, that's a little steep um, just because of all the other options, but I'm not going to be trashing Flaherty as, 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 as a good play this week. And I had been, you know, probably almost every other time he was the most popular pitcher on the slate, but I, I kind of like him a little bit tonight. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. I, uh, I think he's going to end up getting owned a little bit, but I, I do have him another, as another guy. I feel pretty, pretty comfortable with trying to spend down for, cause I'm trying to find yeah. those guys today. Yeah. So I, I think Flaherty is completely in play. Um, I don't feel like incredibly optimistic or excited about it, but I do think that he's definitely in play. What worries me is that he had no strikeouts in that game in five innings against Pittsburgh yep. last time. Yep. That's a little concerning. Yep. Um, so he's beneath, beneath my favorite guys, but he is still a guy who I'm considering using. Uh, it's really going to depend on how, how much I'm, how much value I'm able to, I'm going to be able yep. to get out of this slate. Um, and then for the bats, uh, it is uh, for what it's worth in St. Louis today. It's, you know, 64 degrees wind, five miles an hour blowing in. Um, they have, I mean, the pirates have a 2.8 total, which is kind of offend. Like I'd be offended if I were them. Um, <laughs> but uh, the nerve of these people. That's I don't nice. particularly want to do anything here. And nobody, the only thing that the Cardinals also with, with Flaherty again, they have nothing to play for, but Flaherty is not their ace either. So like, it's not like we have to worry the same amount, but, 
he probably throws around 90 to somewhere between 90 to 95 pitches tonight is my guess if things are going well. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And I don't, and actually, you know what? He probably throws 90, 90, 55 pitches, even if things aren't going well, they probably just want to keep him in that same, same range of, of pitching. Um, that's my guess. All right. Let's talk about Texas and LA. Um, thought about it. And I, I think the angels are, are, are a stack. Um, I, I don't, I don't feel like amazing about this. Um, by the way, whatever what happened to Shea, with Shoei last night? I totally lost sight of that. He gave up a hit finally oh. in like the sixth or seventh or something like no, that. No, no, it was through eight. I thought he was. Oh, really? I don't know. No, I think they took him out before that. Oh, I thought he had a no hitter. You'd be right. I, mean, I thought I, I didn't think he made it that as far that that that. Old yeah, it might have been earlier when I got the message. I might have misread it. Um, yeah, so I I, I think both sides of this the, of this game are in play, but especially the Angels. Um, not not overly excited about any of it, to be honest with you. Um, there there are two stacks I have on my list, but I don't love either of them. Yeah, I actually have them rated higher. I, I have the Angels as the as the third best one. Um, I have Toronto, then someone else, then the Angels, then the Yankees, and I have Texas as kind of one of the top um, value stacks. Um, if you wanted to go that way, so I actually like this a little bit more, I guess. So I like the Angels and I like Texas, and I'm not getting to any of it. My issue with the Angels is we've seen this every day. We've talked about it, and they've always – everybody else has too has had them as a top stack. They've scored over five runs one time in their last 15 games. Yeah, like, I get it. To stack them as a full team on this slate like this, it just that, I just can't get past that kind of thing because they, they have so many weak spots in their order. Now, the good news is when you get when you get points, you're getting them stolen bases and home runs. But I just I – just, it's hard for me to be excited about it, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not excited about it. <laughs> not, that's where they happen to be ranked but I, no I, i'm not i'd rather play, i'd rather play other teams you know i'd rather play toronto you know like we, like we would yep um but i wouldn't mind putting putting some texas in with with you know with uh as like minis i mean i i've, ha I've had you know i've had a lot of luck with i've had a lot, a lot of luck with that josh jung um he's only 2600 um i had a lot of luck with him and then you could play um i don't know if seager's gonna get back in but What's that? Adolis is probably a little too cheap. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like Garcia's at 4,200. I like him. Um, so I think you can play like three mans out of this. You could always play Simeon. So I, I, I kind of like Texas here. Yeah, I, I think these are both compliment. I like what you said. All those guys as complimentary. Sam Huff, if you need a cheap catcher, is a power a guy with at least some form of power that we can, you know, we can look to. And not not a, not a huge power guy, but hit one last night. Um, there's just some cheap bats you could use in, the, in to round out a stack uh, pretty easily. I think that my favorites would be uh, would be the would be the young, um, well Seager if he's in uh, Garcia and Huff and then Semi and the, all those those are my favorite five. But I I don't know if I do it more as a five man or or maybe just as a maybe limited a little bit more. I do think some people are gonna talk about. I, I've heard a couple of things mentioned about Detmers being a guy. I don't think I'm gonna do it. Um, I, I I thought about it. If Texas puts out like two more minor leaguers, I would consider Detmers, but I don't really think he's that exciting for me personally. So probably not going to end up doing that one. All right. Uh, San Diego. I'm sorry. Yeah. San Diego, Chicago sheets. What do you got here? Because I personally don't know for sure who's pitching for, for Chicago, but I really I, like I got Davis Diego. Martin. That's what I, that's what I've got too, but DraftKings has no, uh, do they have it? What is going on? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Got I got Davis Martin in there. Okay, well, um, assuming that it is, in fact, Davis Martin, I think this is a great spot to take a ton of San Diego. I don't think it'd be the worst thing if you want to get weird on this. I mean, look, you don't need to get weird on these sites, but um, Davis Martin, they, you know, they've given him a little bit of a leash. He threw 93 pitches his last time out. I wouldn't be using him, just throwing out uh, some weird cheapo names. But I, I like the idea of of, of playing, uh, playing San Diego here where uh, I'm not expecting him to have much ownership, right? Um, I don't know. I, mean, I have them rated like now with Philly out. I have them rated my fifth best one. So um, I, I think they might get some, but but it won't be egregious as a million game slate and the Dodgers are going to get like everything. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, I uh, I think that you can't, I don't think, I don't think the Padres are going to be particularly high owned. Uh, I like that. And I, uh, and I'm, I like the Darvish too. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think he's, perfectly reasonable right up a lot not me obviously not as good of a play as burns but i mean but why but but why not i mean why why are the white Sox so great against righties you know what i mean like uh 
So I'm I'm kind of in the Darvish having a big game. I mean, he hasn't uh been awesome. I've been following him the you know most of the season, but look at this, he's got a three out of excuse me, five, three out of the last five games are freaking enormous ceilings, including, excuse me, like oh, one on the road against the Dodgers. I didn't even realize that happened. At Colorado and at the Dodgers, they're both both in there. <laughs> um, I mean, why why is he worse than Burns? You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't think he is that much worse. I have a hard time with the idea that he's going to be significantly higher than Alcantara. I I just don't understand it. Um, well, I mean, you understand it just because of the matchup. I mean, I like the matchup better as much for Alcantara. Well, then way. then we got something. Then we can play. Because Milwaukee will swing no. early, and they'll you you could see a complete game out of Alcantara. No. Now there's more danger on the a power up side, but I don't know. It's and. And also, you might get a really lousy White Sox lineup in there tonight. Um, yeah. So I'm just double checking because they're they are officially eliminated, right? I just got to double check that. Um, yeah, they're they're eight back. So yeah, there's not there's they're done. And Milwaukee is right there. So maybe that's the argument is that Milwaukee's playing for something the White Sox aren't. So you're probably going to get a weak lineup. Um, but I, I do have Darvish as my number four pitcher on the slate. I just just throwing out some different ideas here. Um. All right, you ready to go? Because because here's here's where uh, where well, I this is this is the, well this is the best play, right? I mean, uh, I mean Logan Gilbert has to be better than I'm not has to be better, but I I I'm kind of with I'm, I'm not I'm not jumping the gun and saying what you like, but I I imagine that you're probably more comfortable with like Gilbert than some of these other these other guys we talked about. Um, I, I how do you compare Gilbert though? How do you compare Gilbert to Joe Ryan? And to Flaherty, like for example, I think I think they're all good plays. I currently have Gilbert rated a little bit a hot higher than them. Like I I currently have actually Gilbert and Flaherty very similar, and then to, to pair with probably uh, you know one of the expensive guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's listen, it's a great spot. He's coming off of a bad performance, so maybe it keeps the ownership a little bit low. And and you know he's against Oakland, and listen, pitchers are allowed to have have crappy performances. Um, you know, as usual, and th- this guy, as opposed to to Kirby, I mean, this guy can throw a hundred pitches. You know, what I mean, like, they let they let him throw his hundred. Um, mm-hmm. So I I think he's, I mean, he's, I guess he's the best player. That's what I'm. I, I think he's actually a better player than Flaherty. That's that's that, that's my that's my stand. Uh, honestly, I like him, and I love Seattle tonight. Oh, I like that. That's my uh, second value. Yeah, you talk to me about that. Yeah, they're cheap. They this is you got Waldachick who. Can't his problem is this guy had like a thirty percent walk rate in the minor league? Not really, but he he had a massive walk rate, um, even in the minors, and hasn't really shown the ability to get a lot of people out. You know, you have the Mariners right now sitting. Uh, let me just grab my playoff sheet. Uh, sort of, you know, th- th- you know they still have to hang on. They still are playing for home field advantage in the in the in the in the wild card round, I believe. Um, I, I think this is a. This is a Seattle. I, I really like them. They're they're going to be really low owned. You've got the the Suarez, Haniger, and then you've got the cheapo option at, at Santana at first if you want it. Haggerty if you want it at at two point three. You've got Dylan Moore probably leading off at three point one. Takes up a second base spot. Ty France you could use instead of or in addition to finally to Santana because he he's getting some third base love. So I I really like the way this stack works, and I don't think you need to even make it. You can full stack it. I'm totally good with that too because that. A's bullpen is is nothing behind this, but I like the idea of Gilbert with with the Mariners, and I like them in all forms: two offs, three offs, four four man stacks, uh, five man the whole way. I think they make a lot of sense, and they allow you if you do want to play them as a four man or a three man, they'll allow you. They're they're cheap enough to where you can get in an expensive stack depending on what pitchers you're using to go with them. So I really like Seattle. Not that not that you need to get even lower owned than playing Seattle anyway, because they're going to be low owned. Yeah. But if, if Kellen, it gets in lefty lefty at 2,100, I yeah. mean, again, you don't even need to do that, but, but, but that's, 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 that's pretty good. And you could get again, another lefty lefty, which, you know, you don't usually want, but you get winker at under three K um, you could do like a lot of stuff. Like if you want to double pay up for pitching for, by the way, if you want to do some Alcantara de Grom or some, some nonsense like that, I mean, you, you could, you could use these Seattle guys, like I said, maybe not even a five man, maybe just a couple of guys to fill in some lineups or stuff like that. Um, I agree with that. Uh, I like I like Kirby. I like Seattle, and uh, we're totally on the same page there. Yeah. Um. I so so I think that's a, that's that's a that's a good stack. We can get a little bit, you know, well, way off the board with. 
And you know what? If you stack, the cool thing is if you stack like one of these earlier games, let's say you stack the Yankees and you stack you stack Toronto and stuff like that. You could turn off your, your TV because there's nothing going on. It's 10, 10 that has a chance to score 15 runs in the first inning, unless you have like the Dodgers against Chad cool. So let me just see. Oh, wow. Look at this. We got the Dodgers against Chad cool. Um, I, I don't know who the Dodgers are going to play. I almost want to, I almost want like all the scrubs in so I can play them all. Like that's kind of like, yeah. that's kind of like, I kind of want to like, like, like play the Varguses and the, not these, these guys are scrubs. You know what I mean? I, I'd rather let them sit everybody so I can play these other guys. Um, but yeah, the Dodgers are, you know, it's kind of a tough stack to avoid. Um, I imagine unless they're all really expensive, like all of them, which they're not. Oh my God. You got, I mean, bets at 5,800 is actually, I think, I think anybody under 6k in this matchup has got to be considered cheap. Right. Um, <laughs> so all of this stuff, I mean, like, uh, Maybe maybe Bellinger finally finally gets to play. You know, I know he's been. What, what is he gonna? What is he gonna? What is he gonna? Uh, what, what is he gonna bat? He's I bat, mean, he'll bat thirty nine. at thirty three hundred. You know, like right. I don't know. Like everybody's in play for the Dodgers here, um, and you know, it's so the question. I guess how much ownership you want to eat? Yeah, I agree. Um, uh, pretty hard not to have this as like a logical chalk chalk stack, but I don't know if we're talking like it, oh, it's high ownership for like a giant slate, but I don't think anybody's getting crazy high owned today hitting wise. So I still think it's okay to do. Um, I do. I do have the Dodgers ahead of everybody else, but I am, you know, I'll be, it'll be Dodgers with Seattle Dodgers with Toronto Dodgers with the Yankees. That's sort of what my early, early builds are looking like today. And well, I'll tell you something else, by the way. All right. Now this, this could be, quite a troll game in other words you have kershaw and he's going to pitch his five perfect innings right and get him out of there right so 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 if if if, if this goes like the way it could go like you get kershaw with five perfect innings and he's out then you get the dodgers when you're stacking them like putting up six runs in like the first three or four innings and then they just all get pinch hit for the rest of the game yeah there I mean, is there, there 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 is a non-zero chance that that happens yeah especially like if it gets to be like eight nothing in the right or something it just is a little yeah. worrisome from that perspective, but you could take the approach of, okay, well, we'll play, you know, hopefully one of your guys is having the big game and has a home run in the doubles. They're not going to pull him necessarily at his first two at bats. And then, uh, and then you can play the guys who are they're They're going to let Bell Bellinger get his hacks, no matter what they probably leave Lux in, no matter what they probably right. don't leave Gallo, maybe not Muncie. Um, probably not Will Smith. If he's in the lineup, even tonight. It's it's really going to depend on how the lineup shakes out, but I, no matter what, I can promise you that I will have a good percentage of Dodgers, even if it's a. I agree. Game. Um, all right, fin finally ending up with San Francisco, Arizona in San Francisco on a day that it is a normal day, sixty two degrees. Um, I'm just grabbing my uh, my notes here. Uh, <laughs> Alex Cobb, I think, would be the better play than better than Savale, probably right there with Flaherty. Um, I, I don't love it though. And, uh, just, just for fun, for fun, as you, as you say, for funsies, uh, I, I will probably throw one giant stack in against Merrill Kelly. <laughs> um, but I, I'm not overall, this is not a priority for me. I, I guess as my daughter would say, and that's all, as I guess all the people that age would say, I guess, you know, playing always like a couple of stacks against Merrill Kelly is good for the brand, so to speak. Yeah. I, um, if, if I don't have a Merrill, a stack against Merrill Kelly and Jordan Lyles on a, on a slate like this. Yeah, I think I should probably question my career choices. If you're not you, you know, you, you know, I don't, I don't. But the, the, well, I will disagree with you. I don't think Cobb is particularly close to to Flaherty. I, but I, but I, I, I do consider him. I don't know. That's what I'm looking at. Okay. Um, and I, I, I don't have him. Um, I have him more in like the Reed Detmers kind of kind of category. Just the way they're 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 projecting whatever it is. Yeah. Um, uh, he hasn't been very good against Arizona specifically this year. If there's one thing to support your argument. Um, I think he's one of the most unlucky pitchers in baseball this season. I think he's actually statistically. That's interesting. Um, but it is, it is that San Francisco has, I mean, for whatever reason, Arizona has been, has, has gotten him. Um, I just think he's an interesting other guy to add on there. It's not going to be a priority. My priorities are pretty clear right now. I don't, I don't compare him with Gilbert. Hey, I have, I have a question for you. So again, it's a big slate. I, I, listen, I talked about him for like five seconds, just in terms of a game script, but but Clayton Kershaw, it's not as if he's pitched like 70 pitches. No, he's going to throw 90. You know, they, they, they don't they've want been him letting him pitch nine, 90 pitches. Is he, I mean, is he a bad play? 
Well, it's just a matter of how are you going to compare that with all these other guys, especially with the strikeout rates and everything else considered. Um, it's just really hard. His strikeouts have been really good when they when he's known he's going to pitch less, and he's getting he. You know, you know, you don't see with Kershaw very often is a, b- blank in a third. You know what I mean? So if if he's if he's cruising along in the sixth inning, but he's got ninety two pitches, they'll probably you know, and he's got one out, they're probably not bringing him out right then. That's true. So that's that's the way you could look at it, I guess, from an optimistic. But overall, I think they're trying to keep him between 85, 95. Okay. Um, that would be my guess. But again, he doesn't have to pitch for a while. They're going to have a long layoff, so there's a chance they let some of these guys have a leash. So, well, I'll tell you something else, by the way, before I dismiss this. Do you I want mean, to play guy. Kershaw ahead of ahead of uh, a guy who's got a leash like Manoa? I don't know. Well, I, I mean, guess, I guess Manoa is a tougher matchup, but that's what I'm. Just, uh, that was my only point. You know, like if if this is like. This is Colorado on the road. I mean, it doesn't get that much better than that. Um, uh, it's just, I think, I think the slate is too big, but I, I'm just trying to, I just don't want, I, I never want to just dismiss, like, I was going to use hyperbole here. I, I wasn't going to like dismiss, like, the, the best pitcher in like, the history of baseball, like, like, so, 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 so quickly um, against the worst team and that might be the worst team out there. So um, probably won't get there, but whatever. We'll see. Yeah, no, I, I actually even think there's a, there's there's more argument maybe to be made for it. I have him like 14th on my list, but I think he almost I think he usually ends up as the fifth or high, sixth highest scoring pitcher on the slate. I think that's where his okay. normal range is. And if we're paying that price, we may as well pay for the guys who we think are going to get us the number one, two, or three spot. You know, that's my only feeling. Yeah, I agree. But you're, but it's not like he's ten, it's not he's not quite as expensive. It's saving a few bucks with him. So. So my my highlights my my main stacks are Seattle Dodgers Yankees and Blue Jays in that order, um, and then my favorite pitchers are Degrom Barnes uh, uh, Burns Alcantara Gilbert, um, and then I'll be mixing in Flaherty Darvish, uh, Ryan Manoa, as as my main guys I'm mixing in. Yeah, I'm in. I got, got Toronto Dodgers Angels Yankees Padres Texas Seattle. And then pitching wise, um, Kirby, uh, any of the top guys really, um, Burns, Alcantara, Degrom, and uh, uh, and and Flair, and I guess Flaherty for the next one. Yep. Well, sounds good. Well, I, I will be live six Eastern. I know Sheets is not going to be around. I'm tonight. out. Yep. I, I will be around, and uh, but we'll you'll see you'll hear from me on many forums all over the weekend. So uh, I'll see Sunday at eleven for sure. Likewise, and by the way, we've been recording videos with everybody. I would encourage everybody for who likes the an- analysis of numbers to to watch to watch our my ninety minute video with uh with Goldie for this week uh, for football. Ooh, wow, me and Rody did a, a forty five minute vi- or forty minute video or so last week last night about the uh, just our final picks. Sheets and I did our early look. There's a lot of lot of content out there, and I'm gonna be posting all of my football takes over the weekend as well uh once we get the injury report so good luck to everybody um the next time we'll see you at six i'll see we'll i'll see you at six eastern we'll all see you at 11 east, eastern on sunday and uh yeah let's get some more screenshots going tonight good luck everybody